Let's begin. Welcome back, everyone. Today marks the beginning of our playthrough of The Lost Mine of Fandelver. Before we begin, what do you guys think of everyone's new art? Looks great, Ben. Great job. Yeah, I like these new ones. Awesome. We may change them later in the campaign as you guys get to higher levels, but if everyone wants to stick with these ones, we will... I love them. I look so magical. And I look very majestic. Well done, Ben. All right, awesome. I also want to ask you guys and the viewers about your thoughts on our very first intro. Very suspenseful. Yeah, it's got me excited to go kick some ass. Perfect. Well, gentlemen, let's get this started. In the city of Neverwinter, a dwarf named Gundren Rockseeker asked you to bring a wagon load of provisions to the rough and tumble settlement of Fandolin, a couple of days' travel southeast of the city. Gundren was clearly excited and more than a little secretive about his reasons for the trip, saying only that he and his brothers had found something big and that he'd pay you 10 gold pieces each for escorting his supplies safely to Barthen's provisions, a trading post in Fandolin. He then set out ahead of you on horse, along with a warrior escort named Sildar Hallwinter, claiming he needed to arrive early to take care of business. You've spent the last few days following the high road south from Neverwinter, and you've just recently veered east along the Tribor Trail. You've encountered no trouble so far, but this territory can be dangerous. Bandits and outlaws have been known to lurk along the trail. I don't fuck with bandits. I'm trying to get paid. Ha <laughs> ha. You guys hear this come from one of your companions you have been traveling with these last few days. Donald, why don't you describe who they see saying this? Walking alongside the wagon, you'll see a fairly young male human. He is wearing some shoddy metal armor that seems as though it hasn't been maintained in a while. Perhaps it was a hand-me-down, or maybe he just isn't very sure on the best ways to polish it. You'll see a long mane of golden hair going down the back of said armor. It is a bit dirty after the trek these last few days, but he is still attempting to not let it get too out of control. Donnie seems to be keeping a very keen eye out for any trouble, as he knows this area and what trouble it may hold. Hmm, you mentioned bandits? I assume you know of the bad rep this area gets too? Donnie, you look up towards the wagon as you hear this voice questioning your knowledge of this portion of the trail. This figure hasn't said much so far this journey, but you've noticed him keeping just as close a watch on the outskirts of the road. Barack, would you please describe who Donnie sees looking down at him from the comfort of this wagon? From atop the wagon, an elf is sat on what may be some boxes of supplies. The first thing you would notice about this particular elf is that he is not a fair skin like most. With a black and green fur cloak, he has not over his head during this open area. You can tell his complexion is of a more mixed background. This is only helped by the fact that as he stands to continue his watch, he seems to stand slightly shorter than your average elf. While standing, you can see small glints of metal lining his belt from where the sun reflects off it. He is armed, but does not appear to be one to flaunt his weaponry. Or maybe he just has a really nice belt on. Ha ha ha! You're making it too easy for me, Barry. You got something to say, Donald? For Ben's sake, I'll hold my tongue. Thanks, Don. Back to what you were saying earlier, I do know this area. And I also know that people in this particular area may try to make quick work of us and make off with our goods. You may not know me well, Elfman, but know this. Do not try to prevent me from getting anything I deserve, especially some coin. Oh, I have no doubt you will get exactly what you deserve. And I didn't catch your name? I have no doubt either, and my name is Donnie. What about you? It's Barbin. Shifting focus to the front of the wagon, there are two other figures sitting and chatting while holding the reins of the two oxen pulling the supplies down this trail. George and Joe, you can decide who would like to speak first. After you, Joe. In the passenger seat of the wagon, there sits a short man with frizzy gray hair, frizzy gray eyebrows, and a bit coming from his ears as well. He has a very cheery voice due to his obvious excitement about reaching Fandolin eventually. He has on some robes that look a bit too big on him. 
almost like some nice and comfy pajamas, you can assume that they either aren't his or he never grew into them. Oh, man, what I do to be in some pajamas right now. Episode one, and we're already going to need some Sleepy Joe name suggestions. Yeah, I can't even argue on this one. Maybe we could do like a pajama party or something, guys, maybe for our next episode. Joe, there is no way I'm having a slumber party with other presidents and, well, Ben? Oh, come on. It'd probably be a lot of fun. It wouldn't even need to be a slumber party, just like one of those work party days. Like those bring your kids to work days. The last thing I'm doing is bringing my kids anywhere near your workplace, Joe. Oh, geez. Guys, can we get back to whatever Joe was going on about? I think his person. Oh, yeah. I'm finished anyway. Thanks for the heads up. Sitting next to this halfling is a dwarf, just as small about, but much rounder. He has a robe on as well, but his is a dark green and is quite dirty. Funny enough, he also has graying hair, but also a large gray beard that goes down to chest level. He has a small bird on his lap. It's not his, it's just a wanderer, much like he is at this moment in time. He looks a bit nervous, but the funny stories being told by Yorkus next to him is helping to keep him composed. That and the two folks behind him that look far more dangerous. Wow, very nice. Now back to our story. The four of you have been on the Tribor Trail for about half a day. As you come around a bend in your path, Gralmir, you spot two dead horses sprawled about 50 feet ahead of you, blocking the path. Each has several black feathered arrows sticking out of it. The woods press close to the trail here, with a steep embankment and dense thickets on either side. In the middle of laughing from one of Yorkus's stories, hold on, something's wrong here. Huh? What is it? Look, right there, those horses and those arrows. Oh shit, hey you two back there, there's trouble ahead. Yeah, I see. Wait here, I'll go check it out. I'll join him, you two. Keep your eyes peeled for any movement. I'm going to approach these horses, Ben. Do I see anything unusual? Besides the arrows sticking out of them, of course? You see pretty quickly that the saddlebags on these horses have been emptied of anything of potential value. There's also a leather holder of sorts covered by dirt off to the side of one of the horses. Taking a closer look may be a map case. And what about these arrows? Do they look familiar to me? I'd say they do. You've seen arrows like this in recent trips, only they were found in the back of normal townsfolk after night raids. Oh shit, we need to back up, Donnie. As you say this, you notice a small rustle to the right of the road barbin. But then from the other side of the road, a goblin jumps from the brush. He has a crude scimitar of sorts and dashes towards Donnie. Another one pops out with a bow. On the other side of the road, the same thing happens. I'll need everyone to roll initiative. I got 13. Fuck, only a nine. Unnatural 20. Oh cool, me too. Uh, the first pair of goblins got a 19 and the second pair got 17. It'd be cool if we could show our rolls on screen, Ben. Yeah, well, our editor has no clue how to do that, sorry. So our turn order will be Gralmir, Yorkus, all four goblins, Barbin, and then Donnie. Gralmir and Yorkus, you two are both still on the wagon and are about 40 feet away. Due to this, you won't be surprised in the first round. Barbin has high enough passive perception, so he won't be surprised either. Donnie, you are surprised, so your first turn is skipped. Sorry, bud. There needs to be some way to make this fight fair. I'd whoop these punks easily otherwise. All right, Gralmir, you're up first. What you doing? Since I'm a bit far away, I'll hop off the wagon and use my action to dash up to one of the goblins that has a bow out. Then as a bonus action, I'll cast Shillelay. I'll mutter some words and smack my club into the dirt next to me. As I do this, my ordinary wooden club begins to emit a soft, radiant glow. Sweet, you're up, Jorkus. I too will hop off this wagon and run towards those goblins. As I run over, I'll snap my fingers and launch a red bolt of fire towards the other goblin archer in the brush. First attack roll of the game, Joe. Let's do this. That's a 13 to hit. Yorkus, you send your small bolt at the goblin, but hit only the grass next to him. He snarls and prepares to retaliate. Damn it. Oh, well. Now, it's the goblin's turns. The first goblin swings his sword in anticipation at Donnie, but he deftly parries it away. The goblin next to Gralmir attempts to run to get some space, 
you get an attack of opportunity on him as a reaction. Dang, only a 13 as well. All right, he'll take a shot at you, hoping to catch you off balance after missing your swing. That's a crit fail. The goblin prepares to fire at you, but steps in some horse shit off the side of the road and shoots far wide in his disgust. I'll give you advantage on your next hit on him since he's a bit preoccupied at the moment. Ah ha ha, hell yeah. The second goblin with a sword lunges at Barbin while this is going on. That's a 16 to hit and seven slashing. Shit, okay. The last goblin fires at Jorkus after having flames flung at him. Yikes, that's a three. You're up, Barbin. You and Donnie are back to back with goblins on either side of you. I'll take out my short sword hidden under my cloak and stab at him. 22 to hit and nine piercing damage. That'll finish him off in one hit. How does Barbin kill this one? A quick flick of my sword into the gut and a twist to seal the deal. Nice, all right, Donnie has skipped due to being surprised. So it's Gralmir at the top of the round. Crock of shit. I'll go catch the goblin that scampered away and swing with advantage. 21 and 16 to hit for 10 bludgeoning damage. Another one down, how you do it? A nice swing for the fences sends him flying 10 feet away, face in the mud. You're up, Yorkus. I'm gonna reposition and snap at the archer again. 16 to hit and seven fire damage. He's still up, but it looks like he's gonna try to book it after being scorched by an elderly halfling. Now the goblin attacking Donnie pivots behind him to take a stab at Barbin while he isn't looking. 13 to hit for seven slashing. That just misses, thank God. You're welcome. What? Oh, shut up, Donnie. That archer that was hurt decides to take another shot at Yorkus, determined to finish him off. That's a six. Man, this guy sucks. Ah, uh -huh. old Yorkus is untouchable. Go ahead, Barbin. A stab at the weaselly goblin that tried to cheap shot me. 19 to hit for eight piercing. How's he fall? I'm gonna slice at his hand to make him drop that sword, then knock him out with the butt of mine. We can definitely use this guy. Very smart, you're up now, Donnie. At last, I'll sprint up to the last goblin and swing my great sword. Hell yes, a 20, that doubles damage, right? Oh, nice, yeah, I don't think I explained how we'll be doing crits in this campaign. I think it'll be cool to have you guys roll two dice for damage on crits, and whatever the highest number you roll is, we'll just double that. So if you roll a three and a five, we'll take the five and double it to 10. That'd be great if Donnie actually rolled a natural 20. His was unnatural. Wait, what? What's the difference, Joe? You need to get a 20 on the die, not with your modifier added onto it. Oh, you gotta be shitting me. Who even makes these rules? Ha ha ha, at least you hit him, Donnie. What's the damage? Eight slashing, will that finish him? Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, that does. How does Donnie kill the remaining robber? After my long strides over my imposing yet handsome frame towers over the short beast, he's too stunned to move. Maybe it's out of adoration, or maybe he's pissing himself. I place my palm on his head and lift him up. He closes his eyes and his body falls limp to the terrain a moment later. I turn around, holding nothing but my sword and a head in my other hand. What? Um. Jesus Christ. Wait, how did you do that? Do you know magic too, Donnie? Yes, old one, I do. Well, maybe we can share our knowledge with each other. I can show you some cool spells. I know one called silence. Maybe I should use it right now. It's okay, show me if we find more goblins. Yeah, sure thing, Yorkus, I'll totally do that. Joe, you worry me. Yeah, let's just go interrogate that goblin Barbin knocked out. Yeah, I'm still a bit stunned over Donnie's kill. Let's just move on. I'll give the goblin a few slaps to the cheeks and start yelling at him to wake the hell up. And I'll stand over Barbin, holding the decapitated head of his ally as an early birthday present. Jesus, as the goblin comes to consciousness, he coughs and then screams at the gruesome sight laid before him. Please, please, not me too, spare me. Now, where's the rest of your group? Goblins don't live in groups of four? Mercy, they're in a cave not too far from here. Good, you'll be leading us there? And if so much as one gray hair falls off Yorkus's head, you'll be joining your friend here? Yorkus's hair may fall out as is, so I don't see our green friend living long anyway. This is true, I think it's the weather. Or maybe because you and I are old farts. Oh yeah, huh, maybe that too. Ha ha, roll persuasion with advantage. Got a 15. Okay, okay, I'll bring you there. Good, let's get a move on. 
midgets. Park our wagon off the road in the forest and bind those oxen to a tree. I'm about to go full on. Billy the exterminator on those gremlins hiding in that stank ass cave. Yorkus, let's go. Oh yeah, of course. It takes a few minutes to find a good spot for the animals and the wagon to fit, but they're tied securely to a tree and should be fine for food as long as you put some feed out. Yeah, I'll do that. While we're away from the others, hey, Jorkus. Huh? What is it? Just watch yourself around that blonde guy. He seems to kill for sport. And if we look entertaining enough to him, I don't doubt he'll try something. What? Watch it, punk! Donald, they're nowhere near you. Oh, damn it. Fine. Yeah, you watch yourself, too. I'm more afraid of the goblins than anything, so we'll watch each other's back. Deal. All right, Ben, we'll head back over. About time, lead the way, green one. Yes, sir, of course. The spared goblin begins to lead you into the forest. He's pretty good at maneuvering through all the bushes and thorns and moves warily towards the direction of the supposed cave. While we're going, can I make sure there's an actual path we're following? I don't want him setting us up. Yeah, roll survival. Now that's a nat 20, Donnie. Yeah, whatever. Nice. Yeah, you see faint, small footsteps coming back and forth through the weeds and other foliage. It's safe to assume this is the right way. As you guys move on, what's the marching order for this trek? I'll be up front with the goblin. I want to continue speaking as we move on. I'll be behind Barbin. Go in front of me, short round. Wow, nice reference, but shut up. Yeah, I'll be behind Jorkus. And then Donnie, got it. Barbin, what were you going to ask your guy's captive? How many of his friends are in this cave? Uh, let me think, sir. Uh, uh, I think maybe no more than 20, I swear it. Okay, and have you and your friends seen another dwarf on this trail? His name is Gundren, if that helps. Or a human named Sildar. Uh, uh, yes, I think that dwarf is in the cave. He was in the eating cave last I remember. Mm, okay. Why'd you sound so zesty there, Barry? Huh? Me? Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, you went all teenage girl on us. Uh, I don't think I did. Ha ha ha, you totally did, Barry. Yeah, whatever, I'll make sure to give you guys shit too next time you speak weird. <laughs> Let's just keep moving. Okay, right. After about 10 minutes of walking, the goblin stops you. Follow me, there's ropes here. All right, is he being for real? Perception check, anyone can do it. 22. 13. Okay, you both scan the area, and yeah, he wasn't lying. Along the path you're skirting around, there's a snare trap along a tree. Seems he values Yorkus's hair. All right, good, let's move on. Another, what feels like 10 minutes later, the goblin speaks again. Come on, watch out for the hole, it's a big hole. This one, you guys can easily see after he points it out. It's literally just a pit, and it's not even that deep. What pathetic defenses, a rope and a hole. Are we gonna be fighting jesters in this cave or goblins? The goblin turns around to look at you and clutches his fists after hearing your comments. Got a staring problem? I know another goblin who had one too. And I'll turn to the side to show the goblin head strapped to my belt. No, sir, no! His fists loosen and he quickly turns back to the front, quiet as can be. See, Yorkus? I casted silence on him. Whoa, that's incredible. Uh, what time does it appear to be, Ben? You were ambushed around a bit past two to three in the afternoon, you assume. And after fighting, talking to the goblin, hiding your wagon, and journeying, it's probably around four, give or take a bit. All right, I say when we get to the outskirt of that cave, we wait in the forest and take a break for a moment. I want to talk to our guide some more and could use a rest before we go fighting. Maybe we could also surprise them at night. Yeah, good thinking, Barbin. All right, following the goblin's trail, you come across a large cave in a hillside five miles from the scene of the ambush. A shallow stream flows out of the cave mouth, which is screened by dense briar thickets. A narrow dry path leads into the cave on the right-hand side of the stream. Donnie and Jorkus, stick with our guide. Gralmir and I can scout ahead while there's still light. Yeah, let's go check it out. I'm gonna stealth over. You two can roll stealth and perception. 14 on stealth and 11 perception, not amazing. Nine stealth, 20 perception. While you two aren't the sneakiest this time around, snapping twigs and brushing through leaves, nobody is on this side of the stream. Due to the thickets, however, you can't see much without crossing. I don't think we should chance it. Let's wait till dark and cross. Agreed. We'll make our way back. Well, anything? 
Too risky to be spotted in the middle of a stream. We'll wait till dark and see what else this guy knows. All right, are there any good dense spots for us to wait? No check needed. This whole area is full of cover, and you can set up a spot without worry, so long as a fire isn't going. While we wait, I want to speak with our new friend. You guys have a leader of sorts here? Yeah, Clark, he's a bugbear, and a mean one at that. What's Clark got you guys doing out here, and why did you take our employer? Roll persuasion. Only a 12. Just Robin, I don't know much else. Bullshit, spill the beans, pipsqueak. Haha, <laughs> roll intimidation. Unnatural 20, baby. Okay, don't tell Clark, please. He was told by King Grohl to get the dwarf and bring him back to Cragmaw Castle. Wait a second. This isn't a castle. And you said the dwarf was here. Oh, uh, well... This guy spews nothing but crap. I ought to just kill him now. Yes, I'm starting to think so, too. Hey, <laughs> hey. Barack got Sesti again, hey, hey. Ha, ha, ha. Damn it, why did Grohl want Gundren? I got a peek at the letter Clark received. Something from... The Black Spider. Oh, spiders! Chill out, Joe. She wanted all his stuff, including some map. You found a map right, Donnie? No, just the empty holder for it. Am I good to kill this guy now? No, please! How about we keep him alive? Use him as a way to get across the stream easily. They may not shoot if they see us with him. Yeah, I'll help! Uh, fine. Let's just rest for a bit now. Yeah, I'll make sure to tie up the goblin to a tree and sit next to him as we wait for night. Same. All right, so our party has made their way to the goblin hideout with the help of their goblin guide. They wait for dark, hoping to use their new companion as a way to gain safe passage across the stream and gain the upper hand in their upcoming fight. Before the moon rises on this brisk night, however, we'll end tonight's session. That was great, guys. Well done. Yeah, that was awesome. You guys want to go do something? What you got in mind? That slumber party? Hell no, Joe. How about we play some magic? I'd be down for that. Yeah, sure, why not? All right, we can all gather our things and meet at Joe's to play some commander. Are you allowed back there now, Donald? We'll find out. Yeah, we can play at the White House so long as Donald doesn't bring that bullshit Stax deck again. What's wrong with Liesa? It's Stax Donald. We want to have fun. How about Winota? Dude, that's the same thing. I'd rather go against your sliver deck, Donnie. Deal, say no more. All right, my place at 5.30 ish sound good? Sure. Cool with me. Yep. Yeah, it sounds good. All right, see you guys later. If you're still here, thanks. The video took a bit because our editor was busy playing Helldivers 2 recently, so thanks for the patience. If you liked our first session, leave a like and all that good stuff. And if you have any suggestions for editing, visual sounds, and general D&D, leave a comment. I want to truly thank you for watching and have a good one. Spiders!